Hey guys, what's up? It's JB Illusion, and I wanted to do a quick little movie review and talk about Deadpool. You know, actually use the reviews part of this channel's name for a change. Warning! Spoiler! 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 Everywhere spoilers! Because I'm going to be talking about not only the comic book story to give a little, like, depth into the actual Deadpool movie, and I'm going to be just talking about a ton of things that happened in the movie. So... There's your warning! Now, let's begin with the comic book story. So basically, quick and dirty, Deadpool was a mercenary, found love in a hopeless place, got cancer, he was in a hopeless place until some dude came up to him and said, hey, you can join this project, we can cure you of your cancer. Fun fact, this project was actually an offshoot of the Weapon X project. Yeah, you, you know what happened to Wolverine, how they gave him the adamantium claws? It was not a fun place to be. In fact, the security guards of the said facility started doing what was called a Deadpool. They bet on which one of the patients would live. Deadpool, um, wanting to die at this point in his life, basically started being that snarky asshole patient. Challenging everybody and basically trying to get to a point where they would kill him. Turns out that death had his back in the comics. Thanos wishes he had it like that. And she kept him alive and eventually he broke out of the facility with a couple other now mutants. And boom. That's pretty much the comic book story and you know. Deadpool constantly regenerating like his brain matter probably can't be good for anyone. The story as far as the movie goes pretty much takes on the same pattern. There were a couple things that were slightly different, like how Ajax was now the head doctor at the facility and he was, you know, calling all the shots. Outside of that, it was pretty close to the origins. After that, it kind of goes like crazy really quick. So, understandably, Deadpool's trying to get Ajax. Makes sense, Ajax is probably the only guy who can, you know, fix his face because it looks like... Oh my god, a spoiled avocado, as Weasel put it mildly. Um, how Deadpool got his entire Deadpool name is very interesting. He, as I said before, he was a mercenary before, you know, he became a mutant. And all of the mercenaries at this establishment basically had a Deadpool where they would bet on which Merc would die or not. Pretty cool. And Weasel is the bar owner of the establishment where all the mercs would get together and just hang out. So that was pretty awesome. That's pretty much it for the story. It's Deadpool going back at Ajax trying to get revenge. Which is entirely entertaining in only a way that I feel Ryan Reynolds and his hilarity could convey. Now it's on to the characters. You see, Deadpool is... I. You see, I'm not really the hugest fan of Deadpool, to be completely honest with you. Like, I like him when he shows up, but, you know, other times I'm just like, eh, I'll go check out a Deadpool comic if I want to. But every single couple minutes in this movie, it felt like Ryan Reynolds as Deadpool was making me laugh. Just every once in a while. Just, Deadpool takes the fact that he can't die. Deadpool takes the fact that he can't die in a way that Wolverine really doesn't. You know, Wolverine isn't forced to, oh, I don't know, hack his arm off to get away from someone. You know, things like that. It's really interesting. Colossus. See, what most people don't actually understand is when Colossus was first introduced in the X-Men um, cartoon, you know, the 90s one, I was a huge freaking Colossus fanboy. I love him. And this movie makes a lot of fun out of Colossus. And you know what? I got the joke. You see, Colossus is a really, really big dude who's also really, really nice. Not saying he can't kick a little ass. Um, there's a very, very interesting scene from one of the old X-Men cartoons. I think it was like somewhere in the early 2000s where he and Wolverine just had like this insane fight throwing each other into cars, Wolverine trying to cut Colossus up. It was amazing. 
He's tough, but he's always kind of a gentleman. Next, we have, let me make sure I can pronounce this correctly because this is insane, Negasonic Teenage Warhead, pl played by Brianna Hildebrand? Yes, Hildebrand. She was actually a lot of fun. You see, Colossus is the huge, like, I guess you'd say, what's, what's the exact word I'm looking for? Paladin. He's the nice, strong guy who's always trying to basically, for lack of a better term, get people to take the high route. He tries to get Deadpool to take the high route. I'm guessing you understand how that goes. And Deadpool's the crazy guy who's doing crazy stuff. And she really, like, grounds the two characters. It's a really nice mix. You have Crazy Dude. It's basically you have red, blue, and purple that just doesn't give a damn which I found really awesome. As for the character's background in the comic books and stories, fun fact is Negasonic Teenage Warhead is... was basically around for not very long in the comic book. She was a student of Emma Frost, and she died. Shocking. Basically, considering the fact that the character hasn't had much done with her and isn't really in the spotlight, the writers, from what I remember reading, basically said, well, we can kind of have fun with her, do what we want. We have an emo um, teenage girl who could kind of play off Colossus and Wade in their two extremes, which I personally think was a genius idea. We also have Ajax, played by Ed Skrin, Skrin? who is, you know, basic British evil dude. There wasn't too much crazy about Ajax. What I really did like was the focus on Wade and Ajax being very, very similar, but incredibly different. For example, Deadpool is super crazy, um, keeps coming at people with innuendo, jokes, he really doesn't let up. Ajax, on the other hand, is kind of calm, focused. Ajax's powers are basically, he doesn't feel pain. Deadpool, on the other hand, feels pain, but can regenerate it. The two people obviously have very, very different personalities, and believe it or not, you could tell that in certain scenes, like Deadpool was getting under Ajax's skin. He was trying to just like calm himself down, but as soon as Deadpool pulled a very, very interesting prank, I'll try not to spoil that for you guys, um, Ajax freaking lost it. Because he kind of lost control over the facility a little bit. You know, you really can't have your patients laughing at you, you know, as you torture them. It's probably not a good thing. We also have the lovely, lovely, lovely Gina Carano, call me, who plays Angel Dust. Basically, Ajax's assistant, um, strongman, she really doesn't do much in the movie. She's pretty much a mook, but... She has a couple really, really interesting, well, not a couple interesting scenes, maybe two that kind of show how she plays and what type of character she is. Outside of that, that's pretty much the characters. Oh, yeah, there is Weasel, Deadpool's friend, and yeah, they don't call him Weasel for nothing. He's basically the guy that runs the bar that all the mercs hang out in. TJ Miller plays him, he does an amazing job, and the cool thing is, you can tell why Wade and Weasel are best friends from the first scene that they're in together, where Wade affectionately goes over to the bartender and tells him to order him a blowjob. Not an actual blowjob, you know, the drink blowjob. And from then on, it's kind of the two of them going back and forth at multiple points in time in the movie just cracking jokes and those were some of the best moments in the movie for me when weasel and wade are just like sitting at a table talking it felt it felt like you're just chilling with your friend and you're just making whatever jokes you can knowing that you could say whatever because you know that's your friend now vanessa vanessa was dope like vanessa was dope let me tell you guys something. You know that I said death kept him alive 
during, you know, all the torture, all the crazy stuff that was going on. And you got to wonder what type of woman is Vanessa to take the place of, you know, death. And I got to say, one hell of a woman. She basically, she's basically Wade's soulmate. That's, that's the only way I could put it. The way that the two of them played off of each other and met at Weasel's Bar was both hilarious and actually kind of heartwarming. That these two really, really messed up individuals could find each other and actually care about each other was really awesome. And it kind of made me see Deadpool in a different light. No joke. No joke. I mean, he is the crazy merc with a mouth, shoot, 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 ask questions later, get shot, get up, make a joke about My Little Pony, and then keep shooting. But him and Vanessa, you know, the plot of Go Get the Girl usually doesn't, you know, evoke much meaning for me anymore, but this was certainly something. It was really amazing. Now let's talk about the action. Deadpool is a mercenary who favors using two katanas, jumping around, shooting people, and this movie delivered on that. All of the stunt work, all the choreography for the fights was done really, really well, and there were so many really interesting, funny moments with it that I just have to say, watch it for the action. If you aren't a really huge comic book fan, you'll be happy that you saw this as opposed to, what was it? Um, Wolverine Origins, the one with Ryan Reynolds as Deadpool, where he was actually shooting out Cyclops' lasers and had, like, little claws in his arms. Yeah, the action from that movie, I was not feeling that. But this is a welcome departure. Colossus is a big CG dude, and you know what? I loved his scenes. It felt like Colossus. Now, let me tell you guys something. The Colossus from previous um, X-Men movies was kind of small. He was kind of small. He was really tiny. You know what I mean? Like, it didn't seem like he was the, like, six foot four, damn near seven foot, you know, monstrous Russian metal man that I know and love. This movie brought that back. Colossus was big, he was throwing bows, he was fighting how, in the comics, I've been accustomed to watching Colossus fight, even in some of the animated series. There was a moment where there were dudes shooting at him, he said, hey, whatever, there was a tire next to him, he walked over to it, casually grabbed it, and just discus chucked it at these dudes, and that really felt like Colossus. There was also a moment where you saw a typical weakness of Colossus. Colossus is an honorable fighter. And that kind of bit him in this movie. Got him hit. Got him hitting the balls. Wasn't, wasn't pretty. Negasonic Teenage Warhead was... She's not really a fighter. She's basically focused on using her mutant power, which I, I really don't know what the hell it is kinetic shit whatever it was it was pretty cool final verdict um if you are not really a fan of superheroes uh it's probably like an eight out of ten for you if you're not really huge in the comics and if you're just seeing this because your editor was funny it's really good some of the comedy is raw this is an r-rated movie and that definitely stands for raw it gets a little crazy at points. You'll see a ton of skin. Sadly, a lot of it is Ryan Reynolds. But it's probably like an 8 out of 10 for people who don't like comics. If you do like comics and you enjoy Deadpool the character and really just any of the X-Men and really just anything Marvel, you're going to enjoy this. 10 out of 10. And yeah, thank you guys for coming by. I'm JB Illusion. Peace out.